St. Moritz Hotel. He wants it done tonight. A MacGuffin is a term coined by the world's foremost teller of suspense stories to label that secret, elusive, mysterious something that everyone in the story is trying to find or find out about. It is, in effect, the pretext of the plot, the catalyst that brings the characters together and causes them to act or interact, the vial of microfilm, the money, the missing papers, the murderer, the motive, the single reason that causes the entire story to happen. Usually there's only one. C4, you there? Come in, C4. You got C4? Kick it back. Okay, it's all clear. We'll meet you at the gate. 10 4, 10 7.
beim Abendessen gefallen? Aha. Morgen schauen wir uns ein schönes Fußballspiel an, ja? Ja. Jetzt geh schon schlafen, schlaf mal ein und sei schön brav. Okay. okay. Tschüss. Tschüss. Something's gone wrong. There's no way I could take this long. Look out! A biggie. Where the hell have you been? I figured you got caught. We, we got hell up out of Big Lemon. Didn't you see it? Yeah, we saw it. Come on. Damn thing's bigger than my room. One of us got a John in it. Never mind. Let's go. One at a time. you turkeys hit the beach get your butts dried off and get in the car do you have any idea why we're out here tally because you take great pleasure in seeing me get no sleep you get joy out of seeing me upset but this time it's gonna cost you we're gonna go buy Coach Johnson's and we're gonna wake him up. And I'll be mighty surprised if you don't sit out tomorrow night's game, if not the entire season. And if you creeps give me one more bit of trouble between now and next June, I'm gonna see that you're all sent home to Mama. Now move it. I was right. You don't know why we're out here. And guess who's not gonna tell him? Then get your clothes on and go on down and get in the car. Hold it. I 
No, I'm going to regret this. But let's have it. What do you think? I guess the only right thing to do is tell him. Especially if he'd consider not going by the coach's house. Let's hear it, and then we'll talk to You know that uh, safe that was stolen from Raul Hardware in Richmond? No, I'm not familiar with that. Well, we weren't either until the night. You see, we were talking from my room to Foster's by walkie-talkie when this heavy static sound busted in. And right out of the static came this conversation between two men, and they were talking about the safe. The static kept us from hearing it all, but we definitely heard one of them say that they dropped it into a pond for safekeeping. I see. The coordinates he gave were in code, but we think we worked it out, and our calculations led us to this very pond. This one right here? Right. Where you guys spend half your waking hours in warm weather. Some coincidence, huh? Incredible. I know. And since we're not the type to shun involvement, we had to ask ourselves what we should do. Oh, I'll tell you what you should do. What's that, Chief? Go write for television. That's the most preposterous story I've ever heard in my life. Now get your clothes and get in the car. I just didn't want us to get kicked off the team. I mean, middle school is counting on us to be number one this year. But if the whole backfield gets booted. All right, we'll forget about the coach, but this is the All last right. time. <laughs> All right. Come on. Come on. I knew, Rutledge. There are times I really wish I knew. I'll bet it was Arthur Honeycutt. A little wimp. Bookworm wimp. Double wimp. Homer. What? Did you ask me out here to talk about Arthur Honeycutt? No. Then what? Well, I, I, I just wanted to tell you that. I, I just wanted to tell you that I, 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 I'm in love with you. Maybe we should talk about Arthur Honeycutt. I know our relationship's only supposed to be one person helping another with geometry, but I just couldn't help myself. It just happened. I mean, I've never felt this way before. Well, Homer, I'm, I'm really flattered. And, and I think you're a wonderful person, and I want us always to be friends. I just don't feel the same way. And I think maybe it would be best if I recommended to Miss Thompson that we drop the geometry sessions for a while. But, Homer, I'm sure it's just a little crush. You'll get over it in no time. So much for geometry. Just start the day with a grin. The whole wide world will share the mood you're in. Just be your own best friend. Because the here and now will never be again. This is the only time in your whole life long. 
that you'll see this moment or hear this song. So tomorrow, come what may, I'm gonna live for today. This is the only time in your whole life long that you'll see this moment or hear this song. So tomorrow, come what may, you gotta live for today. I still don't believe it. Hurry up, put it up here. Gee. What'd I tell you? Did you ever see anything like that in your life? Never. Let's get out of here. There ain't no money in there, man. There's a body. A what? A body, man. A dead body. Hey, wait a minute. It's gotta be down there. What do you mean, a body? Oh, a body. What? A body, Chief. A dead body. It's the truth, Tally. A body. A dead one. Last night it was a stolen safe. Today it's a briefcase full of money and a dead body. Last week it was a naked stewardess. What do you creeps want from me? A total blithering regression? We're not lying this time, Tally. I promise. Why would we lie about a dead body? Heaven only knows. I don't believe this. We report a dead body to the police, and he won't even go look at it. Doesn't it mean something that the four of us are standing here in your police station, willingly? All right. I'll go out there with you guys. But if there isn't a dead body in that culvert... I swear it was there, Tally. I swear it was. We all saw it. It had on a, a plaid coat. It must be around here somewhere. I, I mean, how far can a dead body go? Tally, wait a minute. We're not lying, I promise. We all saw it, Tally. Look, if they killed once, they might kill again. Boy. 
boy is he Most of the work myself. I write the stories, I take the pictures, I do the page layouts. I even have to sell most of the advertising. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. I mean, one person can't run a whole newspaper by herself, now can she? Well, what do you say? Dead bodies don't just disappear by themselves. What has that got to do with the school paper? They don't just get dead by themselves either. I don't think you guys care. I don't even think you've been listening. I think I'll be running along now. You know what time, huh? Get my two, please. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you guys going? You haven't even finished your sodas. What'd I say? It's really. Guys, wait a minute. I don't want to know what's going on. Does this have anything to do with me and Homer? You, you and Homer? Homer? You never told us you were stepping out, old buddy. Hey, look. Yeah, it's the same lady we saw last night. No, I mean the man at the phone booth. What about him? His briefcase. I think it's the one with the money. How can you tell? A lot of briefcases look like that. I can tell. Come on. Well, what do you mean, briefcase with the money? What are you going to do? I'm going to see if that's a briefcase. Will you tell me what you're talking about? Shh, shh, shh. I want to know what's going on. Shh. Come on, you see. Puppet. Senti, caro. Uh, abbiamo tutto fatto, eh? Cosa? Pensa. Allora, senti. No, 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 senti. That's it. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm told that to him too on that gas on the yeah, corner. We got to get it to Tally. How the hell do we do that? Allora, ci vediamo, eh? Va bene. Ciao, caro. Uh, excuse me. We're doing a survey for a magazine. Can we ask you a few questions? No, no, not now. Uh, it's a survey on well-dressed men for a major national publication. She picks them and I interview them. And she picked you. She's really very persnickety. And you're only the second one she's picked today. So could I please ask you a few questions or we'll never make our quota? Very well, but please hurry. Thank you very much. Now, first, where did you get that sensational suit? Well, I, uh, I bought it in Rome. In Rome? Isn't that funny? Another suit from Rome. You have no idea how many people are buying their clothes in Rome these days. Oh? You like it? Yes. Uh, let me see. Ah, your shoes. Where did you get your shoes? Well, my shoes come from Florence, Italy. Italy? Yes. And your socks? Tally, this is a briefcase I told you about with the money. See that torn material and that gash? It's exactly the same as the one in the woods. We snuck it away from this man outside so you could see for yourself that we weren't lying. Well, go ahead. Open it. Let me get this straight. You stole this briefcase from someone? Well, he wasn't going to bring it in here himself. Now, will you please open the briefcase before he shows up? Rutledge, this isn't sneaking out of the dorm. This is breaking the law. Just open the briefcase, will you? Please? Calm down, Rutledge. The answer is no. Besides, it's locked. No sweat. This works like a charm. Excuse me, but I believe that's my attaché case. Although I can't imagine how you, uh... Is something wrong? No, not really. The boys have made a mistake. Of course, in making it, they've broken the law, so if you want to press charges... Oh, I don't believe that's necessary. Please, Shut up. Uh, Chief Talasek, Mr. Uh... How do you do? Well, I'm sorry if this caused you any trouble. Not at all. I'm sure there's been no harm done. Tally, I demand that you arrest this man. 
You've gone crazy. I say he stole something from me and he has it in that briefcase. And if he doesn't open it up and give it back right now, I'm going to press charges. You have gone crazy. It's your duty, Chief Talsek, to give back my stolen uh, Tasmanian stamp collection or throw this man in the slam. All right! Mister. Look, you really don't have to do this, but you'd sure make my life a lot easier if you'd let them see what's in that briefcase. I'd really rather not, officer. See? One more word, Rutledge. One more word. Is there some reason why you don't want to open a briefcase? Yes. Personal. You mean you refuse to open it? Well, I don't think refuse is the proper word. You said I didn't have to if I didn't want to. Well, I've changed my mind. On the table. The key, please. service, Chief. Look who's here. She sure is good looking. Wonder who she is. Hey, look behind you. Off to the left. What the hell is he doing here? He appears to be looking at us. All right. Makes any sense to me. I mean, there's no question that was the same briefcase. Sounds kind of stupid. <laughs> but I wonder if we could have been set up this afternoon. Hey, you guys want to call us when you're ready to play or what? Sorry. C38 left. On two. Ready? <laughs> before it starts. I wonder where that turkey went. What I wonder is why I let you talk me into coming out here. With all the weird crap that's been going on, this ain't no place for intelligent folk to be at night. It is if you find something solid to show Tally. After this afternoon, I'm not sure that the body itself would be enough. There's got to be something. Like some blood on the culvert or the bushes. Blood would be great. What about the briefcase? The briefcase? The briefcase. I don't believe it. That's exactly where I put it before. Wonder what's in it this time. Tell me that's not to us. I don't lie good when I'm scared. <laughs> What the hell's going on, man? What have we gotten into? I don't know. 
But you know what we gotta do? Get the hell out of here. Uh -uh. We've gotta go back. That's our evidence for Tally. Screw Tally. I ain't going back down there. And I'll go by myself. And leave me here alone? Are you crazy? This doesn't convince Tally. I wish the track coach were here. How come? Because I'm fixing to break the three minute mile. <laughs> Sounds to me like somebody's trying to scare us. They're doing one hell of a good job. Really? Yeah, I'll give you a hand with that. Don't say hand. Funny. Not to me. Me either. It's freaking dangerous what it is. We've got a briefcase full of money, a dead body, a killer, a hand cutter offer. Maybe a whole bunch of killers and hand cutter offers. Did you tell Tally about the hand? Now that is funny. Yeah, 10-4 on that. In a killers and hand cutter office, there's our friend. Hey, I think we ought to follow him. I think you ought to have your freaking head examined. Well, what do you want to do? Just forget it? Exactly. How in the hell can we know what we know and just walk away from this thing? With two hands. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell him. I'll see you guys at courage class. He's been watching too many Clint Eastwood movies.
Oh, uh, Danny, hey, hey, Billy, right? Good, dude, we were just, we saw this girl and, yeah, yeah, skip the BS. I got a plan. You got your walkie-talkie? Yeah, why? You got your super tool? Yeah. Good, follow me and keep quiet. What plan? What are you talking just about? The idea. What? Just wait here. He was in the bar, and I'm gonna make sure he's still there. Wait a minute. What if he sees you? He doesn't know me. He only knows you guys. So stay behind these bushes. <sighs> only someone from Texas would call a Drake's palm bushes. Hi, may I help you? Yes, I was. Um. I was, I was wondering if, if you'd seen my my father. Uh, he's about six feet tall, and he's uh, wearing a, a, a red shirt. His name is, uh, it, it's Smith, Hans von Smith. I'm sorry, but there's no one in here except that group of men over there. I see. OK, thank you very much. All right, the plan is I'm going up to that turkey's room. He's in the bar talking to three other guys. If he comes out of there, get on that house phone and call room 308, fast. Either way, you're gonna get yourself killed. Not as long as you make that phone call. 308, come on, you're going with me. Why me? I can watch as good as Foster. Stick to your specialty. A snap. Wait a minute. Let's make sure no one's home. This is crazy, Billy Ray. Let's get out of here. Not until we find a place to hide this. Their secrets will be our secrets. Marvelous. Now can we get out of here? Calm yourself. Everything's cool as long as the phone doesn't ring. Billy Ray, let's go. Bring your super tool over here. I want to get my super tool out of here. You worry too much. Just open the trunk. Jeez. Holy shit. Things off the hook. Come on, let's get out of here.
rang. Please, don't let us interrupt anything. We'll be gone in just a matter of seconds. I'm tired of this dump. I want to get back to New York. You'll follow instructions. Or you'll end like Prescott. Give me one of them beers. You ain't gonna like it. Don't look up here. Tastes terrible. Hey, why don't we do this now? Why wait a Saturday? Because I said Saturday. Okay, Saturday. I love Saturday. That's fine. But what are we cutting it so close with this 655 flight for? There's another one at 740. Yeah, that makes sense. Gentlemen, you are neither paid to plan or to think. Only to kill. You'll pick up your weapons and be ready to leave here precisely at 6. And by 6.25, there should be no more opposition for the laws. We'll be back in power. You're right. This stuff's terrible. I say baloney. We're just four kids, man. How are we supposed to stop a murder? We don't even know who the murderer is. Well, I say we got no choice. I mean, we can't go to Tally without some solid, tangible proof or he's going to kick our butts from here to Amarillo. And we can't just sit around knowing that someone's going to get killed and do nothing about it. I'm scared. Well, I'm scared, too. It ain't going to make me feel any better on Sunday morning. I'm going to read in the newspaper that someone's been snuffed. And I know that maybe, just maybe, I could have done something to help stop it. Where the hell do we start? We have to start with what we know. What do we know? Well, to start with, we know who's going to do it. The guys in the hotel. Check. We know when they're going to do it. Somewhere between 6 and 6.55. Right. Now we know where. I think I know how to get a list of everybody that's going to be at that homecoming banquet. Good. Then if we can find out something about our four killers, maybe we'll off it together. How are we going to find out about killers? <laughs> Sounds to me like a job for a pretty lady. don't have any fingerprints, or names, or aliases, or anything, except, say, a photograph. Can you still find out who they are? Mm-hmm. In that case, we use this machine right here. It sends the photo over the wire to Washington. Here, I can show you. This is one we did yesterday. First, the photo has to be attached to this special form, requesting all of the information we need. Then we place it on the drum. It's something we have to do very carefully because it's hard to get them under the little slots. Well, for all practical purposes, the machine does the rest. We just turn her on like that. We look up the code for Washington, D.C., which is up here. Punch it in. And let her rip. Scanner inside which electronically reads the picture and sends it over the wire and reproduces it in Washington. Washington, huh? Sure is noisy. Yeah, but it gets the job done. This is the way the computer sends it back. All of the information that we require is there for positive identification. Hold it up just a little bit, Chief. How long does it take? Usually less than an hour now that the computer reads photographs. Really? Uh-huh. That's, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, it is. Just one more shot, Chief. Um, well, I think that just about does it. Thanks a lot, Chief. It'll be a super story. 
Hey, what about fingerprinting? You didn't take any pictures of that. Well, I think that probably deserves a story of its own. What do you think? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. Uh, next week after homecoming when everything calms down a bit? Good idea. Thanks again. You're welcome. Always happy to help you young people understand the law enforcement process. You don't know how much we appreciate it. Arthur Honeycutt? Why'd you invite him to our room? To puke on him? That's not a very nice thing to say about someone who's going to get the banquet list for us. But why Arthur Honeycutt? Of all the people in the world, why Arthur Honeycutt? Because one of Arthur's elective labs is the computer, for which they use the administration computer system. The very same system upon which is the entire alumni and parents mailing list, which can be printed out by alphabetical order, geographical order, by income, and among others, by who has made reservations for the homecoming banquet. You're dreaming. That one ain't gonna do nothing for us but turn us into somebody every chance he gets. Not if you know how to handle him. Come in. Arthur. Come in, come in. How in the world are you? It's been such a long time since we've had a chance to visit. Here, have a seat. Make yourself at home. What would you like to drink? Let's see. Coke. Sprite. Uh, root beer. S'mores juice. The coolers. Actually, I've been saving this for a special occasion. But, uh, if you'd like to have it, you're welcome to it. Are you aware of the dorm rules on alcohol? Of course I'm aware of the rules. But then we're not here to talk about rules, now are we? Exactly what are we here to talk about? Murder. Murder? Murder. Through a series of events, too complicated to explain, we have discovered that someone's going to be murdered at the homecoming banquet tomorrow night. Now, we know who's going to do it, but we don't know who they're going to do it to or why. And without specific information, we'll never get Tally to believe us. So, We'll need a list of everybody that's going to be at the banquet, which happens to be on the computer, which you happen to know how to operate. Well, will you help us? Number one, I don't believe a word of that ridiculous story. You probably want the list for some sort of extortion scheme. Number two, I have never knowingly broken a rule or a law, and I don't intend to start now. Number three, I am going straight down to Mr. Bundy and report alcohol in your room. You turkey book worm, I don't bust your face Knock in. it off, Rutledge. Arthur would never do a thing like that. Unless, of course, he wants the front page headlines of the school newspaper to read that he sleeps with Arlene Moffat's picture under his pillow. When do we start?
Looks like it worked. Like it, Sean. Did you get the one with the beard? Yep. But I'll get him again. Get the big black one. Ah, uh, there's the last one. Uh, yes. We're doing a turn paper on computers. And I'd always heard that the base system had to be in an airtight room for proper climate control. But your door here doesn't seem to fit tight enough to seal. Well, is that just necessary for the old systems, or why? I'm sorry. You'll have to come back when Mrs. Starkey's here. I'm just a programmer. Oh, I understand. Thank you very much, Miss Starkey. We'll have to come back when Miss Starkey's here. No sweat. All right. I don't see any problems. Almost looks too pat. And believe me, anything that depends on Washington for an answer ain't too pat. She says here the two ladies leave at 5.30. Tally no later than 7.30, and the deputy locks up at midnight. <laughs> Look. <laughs> One set of modified mug shots, and they are sensational. They are sensational. But, but, but are you sure that these are the right size? Fit the form like a glove. Guarantee it. Then get them dry, and I guess we're ready. Phone call at 10. Right. If we get caught, I want you to know that I'll be forced to tell the truth. I think that's admirable, Arthur. All about Arlene Moffat and your voyeuristic perversions. Uh, of course, maybe you guys should do all the talking, since you're more experienced at this sort of thing. Good idea, Arthur. Leave it to us. We'll take care of you. Really? is at your disposal. I bet you guys were responsible for the Chase Manhattan robbery last week. How'd you know about that? Nothing's happening. It takes several minutes to process and sort the information before it starts printing. The System 32 is a little faster, but it doesn't store as many megabytes. I had no idea. It's Night Watchman. Hurry up, get behind the computer. Come on.
What if the computer starts? And it starts. I can't stop it from here. How are your nerves, Arthur? Arthur? Arthur. Arthur. Hey, are you okay? He doesn't look very okay. Look, everything's cool now. He's gone. Can you hear me? really freaked him. Arthur. Arthur, you're a genius. You know that? A freaking genius. Police station. Is this Buford Bronson? Sure is. Ah, uh, Buford. I just called up the radio station, had them dedicate a song to you. You're kidding. You called up and had a record dedicated to me? <laughs> Who is this? <coughs> now that ain't fair. You gotta tell me who this is. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> well, what if they don't say your name? Okay. What radio station is it? WNUM? What song did you request? I'd be too embarrassed to tell you that. Aren't you gonna listen? <laughs> well, of course I'm gonna listen. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Then skip the BS and turn on a damn. <laughs> you promise? Okay. I'll talk to you after the song. Bye bye. <laughs> some bitch gonna have some fun tonight. We sure know how to pick them. Really? Suspected murder, grand larceny. Up three times for gangland killings, none of them stuck. Counterfeiting, embezzlement, fraud, suspected murder. And Mr. Farrat. No information at all, except he's an alien from Kabul. Where's Kabul? The Middle East. So what do we know that we didn't already know? How do we tie those guys to someone on this list? I don't know. The ORI. The what? 
The ORI. This uh, morass. It says he's a known sympathizer with the ORI. <sighs> Kabor used to be a dictatorship. A couple of years ago, the dictator was thrown out in favor of democracy and elections. Since then, the ORI has tried twice to forcibly take over the country and bring the dictator back. And our dude with the briefcase is from Kabor. Right. So what does that tell us? That if there's anyone from Kabor on that list, we've got a connection. Arthur, you've done it again. Let's split that list up and get after him. I've been over mine twice and there's nothing. I've got two Italians and a Greek. No Kaborians, or whatever you call them. We've got to be missing something. Like what? I don't know. Something. Maybe Kabor is not the connection. It's got to be. How come? Because it's all we've got. Let's go through once more. Only this time kick out all foreign sounding names. And all Washington addresses. This one doesn't make any sense. Michelle Carter. Does anybody know her? I don't. I'll get the yearbook. Carter's not a foreign name. She's from Washington. Only living parent, Mrs. S.K. Carter. And here's the weird part. It's the only one on the list with a post office box for a home address and two phone numbers with different area codes. Well, the 202 is Washington. I don't know what the 970 is. We ain't got nothing else. Let's call one of them. Without waking Mr. Bundy? I want to see that. Phone booth backs right up to his bedroom. Just as we had underestimated you, Arthur, you have likewise underestimated us. Voila. Ties right into Mr. Bundy's private line. That way, we stay well informed and save on long distance charges. Hey, here she is, Michelle Carter. 
Wait Where? Which one? Right there. That's the girl we saw with the lady in the limousine. Sure is. Give me that first phone number. Um, 202. Uh, 555. 76. Three. Hello, is Mrs. Carter at home? Is Michelle there? Is she in town? You don't know. Oh, an answering service. Uh, no, thank you very much. A post office box. And an answering service. This is making less and less sense. Give me that other number. Nine seven zero oh. five one three zero oh, five eight nine. Give it to me again. Nine seven zero oh, five one three zero oh, five eight nine. going on? One more time. 970-513-0589. Oh, Saying the area code's wrong. Maybe it's a foreign area code. That's gotta be it. How do I dial four? First dial 011. Then 970. Five one three O oh, five eight nine. O oh, five what? Eight nine. It's ringing. English? Oh, thank goodness. Um, who am I speaking to? The who? The operator for the palace of the prime minister? Uh, I know this is gonna sound stupid, but, uh, what country is this? Did you say Kabor? <laughs> yes, well, of course that's where I was trying to call. I just wasn't sure I'd gotten through. N no, I'm a student from the United States. I'm doing a research paper on Kabor for school. Yes, it is most good. Uh, tell me, does the prime minister have any children? One daughter? Her name, Mashkel? Mashkel? Michelle. 
Uh, excuse me, did you say the Prime Minister she? Madame Kura? Oh, well, yes, absolutely. I just didn't know how to spell it. K-U-R-A. Oh, well, listen. Thank you very much. You've been a great help. Uh, no, no, really. That's all I need. But, th <laughs> yes, and bosh lie to you, too. Bye. Well, there it is. That turkey wants to kill your pretty lady in the limousine. Well, better get this stuff together and wake up Tally. I imagine that Tally's already awake. Oh, no. Thank goodness it's Saturday. Really? Well, there's no need to all of us stayed up. You guys hit the sack. Me and Foster will take this stuff down to Tally's. Well, I can't think of anything I'd like better. But you and Foster have done so many numbers on Tally. I think you'd buy quicker if me and Arthur went. You must have heard my bed sheets calling. I think we've done it. Good job, man. In this sack, we have proof that your life is in danger. Now, if you'll come with me to the police station okay, and tell Chief Tally who you are, then he'll just be able to... Just slow down, okay? Just slow down. Now, how do you know who I am? Well, I know it sounds crazy coming from a couple of kids, but it's real, very real, and you've got to go with us. Is anything wrong, Deshan? Well, it seems a good time to meet. This is Monsieur Firat, my security officer. Hey! I wonder what that was all about. Well, I, I just don't understand why why they run off like that. They said they had proof that my life was in danger. Well, isn't it always? That's why I'm here. I just wonder how they knew who I was. I can't go much further. Look, we're almost there. Just come on.
it's all my fault. Billy Ray could have made it alone. I was as tired as you were, Arthur. It's not your fault. The question is, man, what do we do now? Well, we can't just let that lady get killed. Not to mention ourselves. Yeah. Now that they know how much we know, they ain't gonna want us around any more than they want her around. My mind's a blank. I can't even think. I can. What can be better than taking the evidence to the cops? Taking the cops to the evidence. Look, you hadn't run five miles this morning, and I hadn't had your hour of sleep. So, no puzzles, huh? Just spell it out. It's simple. We know they're leaving their hotel room at 6 o'clock. So we get Tally out there while the four guys are there, and the evidence is there. Wait a minute. Even though we've got very little time, and we're probably being sought by the killers ourselves, Let's assume for a minute that we could arrange to have Tally out there at just the right time. A feat which is totally beyond my comprehension. I, but let's assume we could. Then... How the hell do we know that the evidence is going to be there? We don't leave it up to chance. It's second down at four. And off goes to Fred Willis. Gets to the outside. Almost picks up the first down. Runs into a brick wall. Up near the first down marker at the 43. Got just around Ed Jones that time, Ed playing at left end. Ed Jones is kind of uh, the Cowboys answer to Lyle Alzado, although a bit taller. Jones is one of the few men in this league to whom Alzado must definitely look up. First down 10, they got the first down. Standard set with Lytle in the front to the right side. Ken Rose will throw. Here comes the rush. Call tonight at six. <laughs> Come on. station, please. Go straight down Buckingham to Bedford and across. And I want to know the mileage.
I mean, the whole plan depends on you. If Tally's not there on time, the Prime Ministry, not to mention ourselves, are in deep duty. This will help you calculate driving time at a constant speed, say, 50 to 55. I know Tally well enough to know that he hates to look stupid around town. So I figure if we get the siren wailing, we'll have Tally high-tailing. is passed. Right. Don't forget the trunk. You've got to get him into that trunk. I'll do my best. All right. Is everybody ready? Ready. Then let's do it. All right. <laughs> alarm again, then we'll have plenty of time to come back here with the rifles. But if it's a real fire... A real fire? Uh, 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 hey. $780 on a bookie joint? Yes, sir. Here? Yes, sir. In this town? Yes, sir. I don't believe it. it, it it's, it's the one that's circled Crabtree in the fourth at Londing. 156 to 1. I bet $5 on the nose. Uh, here's what I won. Except for a dollar I spent at the drugstore. I don't believe it. The reason I came was that most of the students don't know anything about the tracks, so they're not winning like I am. In fact, most of them are losing, so I felt it was my duty to come to you. Oh, uh, that's very noble. Uh... Arthur. Arthur. You used the phrase, most of the students. Uh, yes, sir. Are exactly how many are uh, playing the track? Playing the track. 
Oh, I guess about 150, maybe 200. Oh. Oh. Hurry up with the scissors. This is precision surgery, my man. Can't rush. Somebody leave the phone off the hook all the time. Hey, there are no pistols in here, just rifles. You must have the pistols with them already. And rifles, I have to do. What did you say? I said they keep their records and their teletype in a trunk, right there in the room, so they can hide them quickly. A trunk? You mean like a steamer trunk? Or more like a footlocker. Looky here. All right. Hurry up. Unlocking a door is not that difficult. You better zip it, my friend, because I have taken just about all I intend to take from you. Does that include your fee, Maras? Gentlemen, you'd better see to your weapons. We leave here in two minutes. We meet again. Yes, yeah, so it appears. Uh, what can I do for you? You got a locker-sized trunk in this room, do you not? Well, yes. Well, I'd like to take a look, if you don't mind. Would it matter? Not in the slightest. chance that any part of what you told me is not the truth, so help you God. Here 
expecting any special calls? Uh, no, yeah. Well, I was just a bit surprised. You see, I, I don't like telephones, and I usually take them off the hook. Maybe I put it back on. Well, then perhaps you won't mind if I answer this one. Oh, no, not at all. Yes? Would you mind repeating that, sir? We seem to have a bad connection. I see. Hold the line, Mr. Spex. Hands in the air, gentlemen. First one that moves loses a head. Arthur, open that closet door for me, please. Doesn't appear as though we'll need that bookmaking evidence. It seems as though what we have here is a solid case of kidnapping. Kidnapping? What are you talking? Well, this is absurd. Shut up. Arthur, see if you can get the boys untied. Hello, Mr. Spex. This is Chief Talasek of the Southampton Police. Your boy is safe now. There'll be no need for that ransom. Yes, sir, I'll be happy to do that. Give me your number, I'll call you back. Right. You boys okay? Well, well, well. You guys are sure making it easy. Hey, Chief. What do you want to do with him? Get him over there, out of the way. Yeah. Look at here. The newspaper they cut the ransom note out of. Hang on to that carefully. We're going to need it. You got it. All this stuff. Very well done. Thank you. One question. Why kidnapping? Don't you feel a little guilty handing out such stiff penalties? Not really. You see, the choice is yours. Uh, Either confess to the real crimes or take the rap for a frame. Did you get the press? Did I ever get the press? All right. This may save you some time to give them a file. And uh, since they've already confessed, I wouldn't say anything about the kidnapping thing. Don't tell me that there wasn't really a kidnapping. Okay. I won't tell you. When you find somebody who cares, don't you let it go slipping away. Cause when you find someone with love to share, hey, you're headed for a better day. It's a big cold world. We're living in, you need some help along the way. You need someone to ease the pain. A little sunshine with all the rain. You need someone who's always there. Somebody who really cares. Cause you'll never find what you're looking for. And you know I could care for you And all the things you wanna be 
I could be your calm in a raging storm, be your refuge in your retreat. When the world's unfair, I will be right there. I'll be a shoulder to lean upon. You need someone to ease the pain. A little sunshine with all the rain. You need someone who's always there. Somebody who really cares. Cause you'll never find what you're looking for. People say you need 